I'm, I'm your host, Jefferson, Jefferson Denham, Denham, and today, today we are joined by our guest entrepreneur and CMO, John Rayner. And John will tell us about his businesses, not one, but multiple, and how, and how he strives to make a social impact and discuss not only what it's like to be a successful business owner, but also what you can do to get started in your entrepreneurial journey. So thank you for joining us, John. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, so glad you're here. So on this show, we we like we, we break down how Gen Zers can be successful in the business world. Learning from experienced people like you is the best way to learn. So so let's get right to it. Uh, are you ready to dish out some knowledge? Yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Let's go. All right. I'm excited awesome. about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you are an entrepreneur and a CMO. How many years and businesses do you have under your belt? Um, non-dissolved businesses too. <laughs> but that just kind of goes to show. Okay. Uh, I, I definitely uh, gone through through a multiple uh, business ventures from marketing consulting, uh, and then in 2013, uh, I founded a found an organization called San Diego Social Leagues, where we build community through sports, social, and charitable events. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of where I started my learning around what it really takes to become successful and have a sustainable business model, not just something that you can, um, you know, maybe make a couple bucks off here, more sole proprietor. How do you take a business from something that is smaller, generates a little bit of revenue, to something that's scalable and, you know, sustains the test of time? Um, that was kind of a fun uh, seven years. Last year, things were kind of put on hold, but it actually gave me the opportunity to catch my breath. Uh, and I was brought on to be not only CMO, but also CEO of Back Defense Distribution. Um, and now we are uh, we're committed to public health and human connection. So we are an antimicrobial barrier protection uh, that's long lasting, very durable, not only for surfaces and, and industrial spaces, but also for the person. And we have we have some really innovative products, really innovation, disruptive innovations. Uh, but yeah, I got into business for myself. I'd want to say about seven years ago. Seven years it's, ago, yeah. And you, uh, John, like, so what I love about what you just said too, and for those watching, is that I think most people might have a misconception about being an entrepreneur. Like right out the gate, I'm going to get all this venture capital invested in my program, right. my idea, and I'm going to hit it big. But what you've described is you kind of have a long game view. Like you're going to let life experience teach you, right? Is, is that fair yeah, to say? Yeah, so I mean, there, there, there was a lot of that. And I think I've, I might've grown out of that now, but that's just kind of the education that comes with doing. Um, you know, I went to school for behavioral sciences. So I do have some insights into, you know, uh, psychological purchasing, you know, uh, you know, things of that nature, uh, you know, social dynamics and social trends, things to kind of uh, let my imagination go to work around. But I had to learn business autodidactically, you know, and that was just mm. like, Kind of, you know, and I encourage everyone that's watching, you know, fall in love with learning uh, to really be a good resource for any business venture, whether it's your own or being part of a project. The more information, the more problems you can solve and bring solutions to, the more value you have. And when you run your own business, and if you are CEO, founder, president, uh, or wearing multiple hats like I do in, in, in startups, you wear multiple hats as the CEO. You're not just a revenue driver. Um, you know, so, so it's a learn as much as you can, because the more problems you can solve, the, the more it, problems you can get ahead of, you know, the, the more ideas you have. Uh, and so that's where really, I think, the foundation would start around. Uh, there is a little bit to learning academically, and then at some juncture, you do have to jump in. Um, right, right. So and, there's a uh, distinction between yeah. academic learning and practical learning, and you want yeah, to integrate absolutely. them. Absolutely, because they're, they're, here's the here's the difference. It, you know, so is is that you don't anticipate on the academic side uh, personalities, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> right? And people people are a different bag, right? It's a completely different bag. It's relationship building. Uh, it's being able to you know understand somebody else's motivations, their drivers. You know, just you know whether somebody this can be your business partner or purchasing decisions, what drives purchasing decisions. But, uh, you know, it's um, it, it's been fun. Uh, and what I really would encourage people to do now, too, is start with planning. And that's one thing I wish I could have gotten into maybe instead of you know, four years ago, right off the bat. You know, mm -hmm. so if I were to lend some of, you know, credits to some of my life experience, it would be around really getting into the business planning, putting pen to paper. Um, this is something you can't do by yourself in the long run. And let's be honest, I think people can create intellectual property, have an idea, 
but the actual actu actuation of a business plan and model is going to take a team. And that's where they dive in and making sure that you have all the pieces, the right relationships uh, are really, really you know, um, set up for you to, to make it a win. So tell us a little bit about your personal background, if you don't mind, because we believe on this show that your personal background obviously <laughs> informs your present and your future. Sure, so, sure. So can you give us a little background on yourself? Um, so I, I kind of, I guess this might echo a little bit about, you know, the academic versus life. Uh, I grew up in a college town in Amherst, Massachusetts. My father was a uh, research psychologist. His focus was the psychology of reading and cognition. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and, and I had resistance towards, you know, academia. And it, it probably my you know, rebel teenage years. Uh, but now I've grown to appreciate that and really love learning. Um, but I was uh, all figured out. I'll do it myself. I don't need these books. You know, <laughs> uh, and then I moved to San Diego, California. I, I, I you know, I went got went to UMass and um, then got done there and needed to mix it up. And I came to California, and there's been a lot more, uh, uh, I guess, motivation to you know, it, it, from California. I don't want to say Massachusetts is depressing, but lived there for 24 years. It's not a postcard that you see. You know, and so I would say, you know, just because you're working doesn't mean you're not in business. Just because you have a job, you're involved with the business. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. There's all these moving parts going on. That's where I kind of conceptualized, you know, and found a model that I wanted to run with myself, and that was in sports and social service. Wow. And I found a way to innovate and that I liked and, and some programming that I thought would be uh, beneficial and impactful and, and decided to do my own thing. We're going to take a quick look at this clip of you on the homeless situation in San Diego. Hey guys, John Rayner here, um, coming to you from the Next Studio, uh, this podcast studio here at the Nest uh, in First Avenue in San Diego. Um, we know living in San Diego, we have a homeless issue. There's, there, you can't walk outside without coming across people that are in some dire circumstances. Um, so we wanted to have a conversation today uh, about some of the solutions that are being brought to this problem. Um, and it's kind of one of these situations where we need some help from the public to get us a head count on, on what this situation really looks like. So, so Bria, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the experiences you've had when you go out to connect with these individuals. Um, I would say that for myself it's very empowering. It's also very empowering to just give um, our homeless neighbors a voice. If you're somebody who's saying, how can I help? Uh, this is how you can help. You can get out there for one morning for about four hours, for I believe 4 a.m. to, four hours. to four 8 a.m. Yes. with a team, uh, and you can go help count the homeless, and there's some, some questions that are asked. You know what I love about this, John, is because I've, I've done some volunteer work with homeless folks, too, mm -hmm. and just the fact that you're, I love what she said, our homeless neighbors. Uh, there's so many people that try to demonize the poor. Sure. It, it feels like to me. And so yeah, the fact like walk a mile in their shoes, right? Well, yeah. And so that's what you are doing with your efforts. So we see your work with partners to help all sorts of causes, including homeless. So uh, tell us more about the social impact that you want to make the San Diego social leagues overall. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, as I mentioned before, our mission statement is uh, building community through sport, social and charitable events. Um, uh, we believe in improving the human condition. Uh, how do we do that? You know, social programs are a great way. And obviously, there's a business behind this that keeps it going and has to fund things because this is the reality of life. But how can we use our minds and creatively uh, collaborate uh, and, and solve some of these problems that are really you know, dehumanizing problems to still have with kind of the resources you think that would be appropriated to uh, you know, lift somebody up and, and, and solve these problems once and for all? Uh, so you just have to do your part. Really, um, you know, and and for me, it's uh, you know, how do we help people? If you know, if you're if if you're north of the soil, there's hope, mm. right? Um, and, I love that phrase. If you're north <laughs> of the soil, there's hope, right? Uh, and, and and so it's it's it, what, 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 people aren't taking the time to invest in what it really takes to nurture a human being back to uh, being self-sustaining. Right. And there's all different types of programs. I work with uh, a good friend of mine, Bob Link, who's with Uplift San Diego, uh, the Downtown Christian Fellowship, and, and any organization that's actually being you know, proactive and, and you know, people that don't just talk the talk, they get involved. Right. right. Um, and in that, that particular clip that you were, you know, the point in time count is, is very critical because that establishes 
you know, appropriations for you know, financial appropriations to help solve the problem. So if we don't, so getting into the data of it, if we've got 10,000 homeless, what's it going to take to you know, maintain where we're at, but also improve from these, these, in these areas? How many people are we, are we putting under a roof every night? How many meals are we distributing? Right. But more importantly, too, how many people are we getting to, into transition programs? And what's the success rate? When we return, John will tell us why making a social impact is a big contributor to business success. So don't go away. questions uh jonathan and i were just talking about was that it seems like so many people now uh, the new uh i'm going to say younger generations but even older generations want social responsibility in the, in the companies that they do business with and so jonathan you're obviously living that out in spades what do you think about that uh that comment about how people want more out of a company that they do business with Sure. I mean, you kind of hear it all the time in other areas of life. You have to give before you receive, right? Um, you know, it's spoken, um, you know, anywhere from your pastor saying it to, you know, business you know, uh, coaches. But it's true. And, and if you follow uh, the drivers of, of Wall Street investment funds right now, uh, they're really investing in companies that have what's a, a, a strong ESG rating. Uh, ESG. That stands for, ESG, that stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. And what that pretty much means is, is that a privately or a publicly traded company has an obligation to their shareholders. Every company really has an obligation to their shareholders, but they haven't put so much emphasis in their stakeholders, which mm -hmm. would be their customer base, the people that uh, support the communities that their, their warehouses in and their manufacturing plants are in. Uh, it's just kind of like being a good citizen, really. Uh, right. <laughs> um, and, but the important thing here, here is that, you know, and there's no real, they haven't defined uh, uh, how the rating system works yet. It's still kind of being developed and some of the larger minds are trying to quantify that, but it's a good team. So if, if you're being eco-cautious, you're not, your, your product line, so one of the challenges we have at Backy Defense is how do we get rid of having so much waste, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then social, okay, so. Uh, are we committed to social programs in our neighborhoods? Are we sponsoring uh, or marketing through social programs like San Diego Social Leagues to really you know, help expand our audience and reach you know, and, and, and extend our brand to community activities? Uh, governance, do we have a diverse board? You know, is this going to be uh, the Mad Men you know, kind of uh, business model here? Are we going to be 2021 already, right? Mm. Um, and and that, those are really, really big drivers in, in uh, the stakeholders the people who buy your products and endorse your company and their, you know, their willingness to pay and be, be, be a customer of yours. And I so think, it's, by the way, John, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but one yeah. of the things I think that you're alluding to is that so how do we, because it, it, it's not the Mad Men era no, anymore. It's not. So what do you, how do we define or how do you define uh, success? Uh, success is going to be different for everybody. Yeah. Uh, that definition, but how would you define it? Yeah, so uh, very relative, right? Um, so I guess it's, it's the success is kind of uh, have you appeased your mindset? What drove you to get into this? And, and you know, success isn't a number. It isn't, you know, in my mind, you know, success is a mission. And did that? Did your efforts lead to mission success? And that again comes back down to you know, as a business owner, not just hey, do I have some products I can go sell? It's it's what is my real mission? And again, say back to defense, we're committed to public health and human connection. Did we do that well this year? Because if we do that well this year, we follow the business plan that we put down in front of us, our roadmap to success, our blueprints, you know, the numbers will follow. Mm. If we did, or if, you know, so that's kind of, that would be my two cents. It's very relative uh, 
to, to every individual, but you know, don't define it in, in quantifiable numbers. Gotcha. And so it's inter- I love how you're integrating. Yeah, you're not saying don't be successful, but you're saying success and then bring others with you. I love that. Yeah, the, I mean, the business plan has to be viable financially. And that should be that there's a lit, there's probably a litmus test you should have gone through before you, you know, started to actually you know build the infrastructure, take your product to market, you know, doing all the things that you do to grow a business. Right. All right. So uh, hang with us, audience. We're going to take another quick break, but don't go away. We're going to continue our conversation with Jonathan Rayner. Stay right where you are. Yes, I can't help myself. Jonathan and I were talking during the break. So Jonathan, welcome back, everybody. And now that we're back, um, so Jonathan, people tend to look at successful people and entrepreneurs and they think that life is just (laughs) rainbows and sunshine. I think we talked a little (laughs) bit about this before. So we know that's not true. I think you're going to say that's not true. So let's get the truth out there. Okay, so before we continue, let's take a quick look at this clip. Other people are stepping into space. There's going to be competition, but that's what we're good at. That's what well, the athlete, the, the athlete competition all of us is good because what, what I saw that and my guy told me is on good. I said, cool, now we're on a bit more than America. Mm-hmm. Right? In my process, thinking is there's somebody else using the technology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It creates a psychological so It creates a psychological uh, thing that, okay, impact. but we do it better. But I think all the challenges that we see, we see opportunity, and, and they're challenges, but they're not insurmountable challenges. Last month and a half, we have been really put together to make sure the EPA is right, the FDA is right, making sure um, OSHA, making sure everything that you need when you're sending out to a customer or a potential customer has everything that they need as far as research is concerned. Understand with this. There's a lot of information here, and you don't want to get caught up in sales. You got to make it simple, stupid, right? I love what you said that there is challenge, but that that also can lead to opportunity. So that leads me to a question: How do sure. you keep pushing and make it around the make it through difficult days? Well, as I alluded to earlier, uh, if you're north of the soil, there's hope. <laughs> uh, these so so whenever there's challenges. Um, there's a lot worse problems than a business challenge that most people are probably dealing with. So that gives some perspective to this. Take a deep breath. You don't need to be reflexive and have an answer that moment. What you need to do is go talk to advisors, find information around the stress point that you're experiencing, and take the time to really understand you know, what the stress point is. What the, you know, and don't get discouraged. Work through these things. But, you know, mm-hmm. This isn't rock. We're not, we're not trying to create a new you know, uh, uh, a periodic table or pre- periodic element, right? It's, you know, it's, <laughs> right, right, uh, I got there's you. Gonna be a, there will be a practical solution. And, and a lot of it too, you know, again, uh, there's so many creative people out there. Um, and, and it's really fun to sit in with teams in, in boardrooms and think tanks and just say, guys, brain dump. I mean, here's our problem, right? Brain dump. We're smart. Mm. <laughs> wow. We can figure this out. You know, what I love about that, too, is that you're suggest- and I think you're living this out with your life. We talked about this a little bit earlier, that you have a long game kind of vibe about you, if you don't mind me saying. Sure. So let's talk to the young entrepreneurs again watching us. Mm-hmm. How can, let's say someone is plagued, I'm going to call it plagued, with an I'll do it all in one day kind of mindset. Yeah. Uh, and, and so if that is the problem, how do we get started it just in this long journey, it's not an overnight thing. 
Right, right. Uh, so what I would, I, I would, I would encourage a mental shift. Uh, you know, uh, uh, change your perspective. If you're just going to jump into it, uh, what I'll tell you to experience is what I went through, which is, you know, you might have something that's doing, getting a little bit of revenue. New and, and it's and it's growing a little bit of legs, but is it scalable? Now, if this is something where you can pull off and you can be a sole proprietor and it makes you happy and it puts food on your table, great. I hope you're happy. I wish you the most success in that. Uh, if you're looking to scale a business, I mean, we can go uh, you know, all the way to uh, enterprise level um, a, a, a corporations. There's some fundamentals. So I really would hope that they would take a deep breath, look at some of the fundamentals around building a business plan and executive summary. Uh, maybe look at a um, you know, sustainable business model canvas, you know, helping you establish a value proposition and then identifying your sales channels, et cetera, and moving kind of through those, those processes. And they're actually kind of fun to do. And when you learn about them, you know, <laughs> it's not algebra. It's not this crazy, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's everything in your mind just put into a roadmap. Uh, so I would just really encourage, uh, you, you can jump right in, but don't jump right in without while, while, you, know, you can do two things at once. You can parallel right. your build while you're trying things out. But and just I don't love, do one and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I love yeah. that word scalability because that means it's it's you're allowing for growth to happen. You don't need it to happen right away. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you've already answered this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Can being a successful entrepreneur be done all alone, or is it a group thing about who you know or who you work with? So I think there's a little bit of everything, um, you know, and, and it's, there's, there's no really set, it's not rigid, you know, it's, it's a fluid thing. Um, I think uh, in my experience, can you do it alone? In theory, sure, you could, but you're going to have a lot of challenges. It's going to be very difficult and will it be realized in a, in a, in while you're still alive? Who knows? Um, right. But I do believe that, you know, an intellectual property side, uh, you know, if, you know, just like uh, Augustine who founded Backy Defense, he owns the intellectual property rights, mm -hmm. the molecule and the formulations. And those can be done by themselves, but taking it to market, scaling your business, um, you better start, you better start piling up. And that's going to come down to the networking. And it isn't always who you know, although those are great resources, um, but networking is critical. And so don't be afraid to get out there, rub elbows with people, go work the room at a, at a, at a networking event, uh, go find people that are operating in the same space, share ideas or ask questions. Obviously, don't give, uh, you know, <laughs> give everything away, but I, go find your peers. It's not, it's not uncommon for people that operate in the same space to socialize together. Right. Well, that is fantastic advice. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. And anybody watching, I hope you wrote that down. So. John, thank you so much for joining us on Generation Zoomers and giving us an inside look at what it's like and what it takes to be an entrepreneur in today's society. As for all of you, thank you for joining Beach Variety Generation Zoomers. I'm Jefferson Denham. Jonathan Rainer, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So in a few minutes, we will get a look at a skateboarder and musician right here on Beach Variety. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>